Hi guys, welcome back to Minnie Monet's Art for the Young. Today we are going to be learning how to draw a squirrel in a fall scene. This is going to be used with watercolor paints. So the items that you will need to create our fall piece will be some high quality watercolor paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, don't worry about it. Just use regular paper at home, or if you prefer to use a canvas, that's fine as well. But this is my favorite brand. This is the Canson watercolor paper in extra large. I'm using a size nine by 12 today, um, just because I think it's a really nice little size. It's a very high quality, and you may have the choice of painting this either landscape, which is what I did, so this is landscape, or if you prefer to do it portrait, you could do that as well. So the other items that you will need is a jar of water. You will also need a watercolor palette with different paint colors of your choice. Or if you're using pencils, that's fine as well, or crayons or markers. And paint brushes to go with your watercolors as well as a paper towel and a nice sharpened pencil with an eraser. So this is going to be a step-by-step -step piece. So I'm going to teach you guys how to sketch your art piece first and then I will teach you how to do the painting as well. So this is our art piece, our fall squirrel with watercolor paints. Today I have two helpers with me which is kind of fun. Uh, they are my daughters. Heidi is my first Hi. assistant over here. Hi. She is seven years old and my other daughter is Hannah who is also going to be working with us. So it's gonna be pretty fun to see what um, kids can do as well for this piece if you are a child or an adult wanting to do this with your kiddos or with a class, it's kind of fun. So we're gonna do a bird's eye view for you guys so you can really get a nice angle on what we are doing and I'll zoom in at times as well. Okay, so we're just adjusting our camera and our tripod a little bit just to make sure you guys can see really well. So just remember when you are painting with watercolors and you're using watercolor paper, you are definitely going to want to sketch lightly, okay? So sketching means to draw lightly. So when you do this, you don't wanna do a hard impression on your paper because watercolor paper really absorbs all of that. So you wanna just sort of keep it light. That way when you erase, which I, erase a lot and I expect you guys will probably do the same. I know my daughters do. So we are going to go ahead and get started and keep in mind my art piece is inspiration for you. Okay guys so this doesn't mean that you necessarily have to do the exact same thing. Okay so this may mean hey maybe I want to do two squirrels or maybe I want to do uh, multiple pine cones or maybe I want to do just a few acorns and you can see the colors in my leaf here they're sort of ombre oranges and yellows and browns. If you prefer to do more greens or more reds go for it. Okay so this is just inspiration for you guys. So we are going to get started. Okay so the first thing I do is I go ahead and start in the middle of my paper and I'm going to start with the head, okay? So the top of the head is gonna just be a nice arch and then we're gonna to start to go back to the back side of the head. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by creating this nice soft arch for the top of the head. We're gonna zoom in while we do this part so you can really see, okay? And then we're going to go to the back, back of your head, just going back down. And then we are going to go ahead and do the back side of your squirrel. So this is going to be the spine and you're gonna do a nice big rounded spine and hind end here, okay? All right, how are you girls doing? Doing okay so far? Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so before we continue on with more shapes, I want us to go ahead and go into the head. So we're gonna go into the front part of this squirrel. All right, so you can see on here, We've got a nice shape for the forehead area, and then we're gonna go right into a little bit of a nose. Remember, it's not super pointed. It's just a really soft and gentle nose area. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with you guys. We're just gonna go down so it looks like the forehead, and then we're gonna go into a soft, gentle motion for that nose. All right, so now when I come down, remember, squirrels have big, beautiful, fluffy, squishy cheeks. Okay, so give those cheeks some love. So as you can see, I dropped it down and curved it around just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of character in here. Now remember, yours might be pointier or more rounded. It doesn't really matter. You have fun with that. Okay, how are you doing? You guys are good so far? Yeah. Awesome, those look beautiful. 
Okay, so we're gonna show you Heidi's for just a quick second, because you can see where she's at, and she's following along just like me. All right, there you are. Okay, so now let's go ahead and give our squirrel some ears, because it's always nice to give um, some visuals so that we know what we're doing here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring our ear and I have nice little small pointed ears but this ear is going to sort of be tilted towards the back. Okay so it's going to be curved a little bit like this rather than straight up but you can do your straight up if you'd like or forward. Mine are curved just a little bit just more towards the back. Okay so I do that and immediately I'm going to erase this line right here. All right next we are going to create that second ear which is right here, okay? I'm going to just put that right in front of the first one, and this little ear is going to be slightly smaller because remember, when you have an item that is perspective and you have it next to it or behind it, it's going to be smaller if it's behind so that it looks like it's in the distance. All right, so we've got this one. Now, before we forget, we wanna go ahead and create a little bit of a line right here, and I'll show the girls as well. You guys can see just a small little line right in here, just so that it shows that we've got a little bit of the inside of the ear. Okay, awesome. Notice I did not erase this line, just the first one, okay? So it looks like this is attached to the head. Now, let's add a little bit, oh, that looks great, guys. Let's add a little bit of a nose to ours, and very simple. It's going to be just a line, just a line coming right out of that pointed area. So I'm going to bring this out here just a little bit, just a little line, and I'm just going to drop it down just a little bit. Now, if you're really feeling up to it, you could do a very gentle side, kind of a small, like a parenthesis or a little side smile right here, just to give it a little bit of movement. That's like where his little puffs and his little whiskers would be. Okay, so now I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna create the eye because this is going to sort of help bring him to life a little bit. Your eye can be completely different than mine. So if for, for instance, if you really were like, you know what, I, I just really would like a more character eye or a kawaii looking eye, go for it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just start and I want you to think vision, um, a lemon okay or an almond almost so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a slight arch notice my eyes not way up here it's not way down here it's just right in the middle and I'm just gonna do a nice little arch for the first think of a lemon keep it smaller than you would think initially and I'm just gonna create that next little area so what I did here is I just sort of filled this in I knew that this was going to probably be black you could do it a really dark brown or something, but I knew that this is gonna be black. So I'm just gonna fill it in so you guys can see visually that that's what it's gonna look like. Then what I did was I created the outline, which I knew, hey, I kind of want my squirrel to have a little bit of a white marking in here. So I created that. Okay. Now, how are you girls doing? Am I going too fast? Are you guys doing okay? Awesome, it looks beautiful. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to drop down and we are going to create the leg area. So this little underside here, we're going to create the little foot. So girls, we're just gonna keep going here and we're just gonna drag it, drag it, drag it into a little bit of a foot. So it, look, we know that's gonna be their little foot area. Now, let's go ahead and bring our back leg here. And this is going to remind you of half of a heart here. That shape is gonna feel like a half of a heart, okay? So I'm going to bring half of a heart over here, nice big back leg, and I'm gonna just bring it over so that I have a creation of my little foot here. And if you need to do some racing, do that, which is why we draw lightly. All right, so you guys can see, he's starting to take the shape of a squirrel already. These are beautiful. Hannah, let's see yours for a second. Okay, here's Hannah, she's 12. Beautiful, looks awesome. There we go. Okay, Heidi, I love it, looks great. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and create the arms, okay? So these little arms, you can see on my sample piece, these are bent arms, okay? Because he's reaching out with his big old, um, our little chestnuts here. Okay, so we are going to, or acorns, excuse me. So we are going to go ahead and create a bend in the arm. So I'm gonna start with just bringing it here and we're gonna reach out. 
Okay, same thing over here. Just a small, they've got little small arms. So I'm just gonna start with that right there. I've got a little bend. If you're feeling like, oh my gosh, you know, I really just need to make my little cheeks smaller or I need to make my arms smaller or bigger, do that. Just don't even worry about it. Do some erasing. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to create the belly. I know you guys were thinking, oh, we're gonna do the acorns. No, we're gonna do the belly because the belly really helps give that character of the scroll. So I'm gonna come from here and I'm just going to give him a nice, big, rounded, full belly, okay? Nice, big belly right here. And this is really a good time to kind of go in and say, okay, maybe I wanna make some areas smaller or maybe I want to adjust the back area. You know, make your squirrel proportionate so that it feels good for you. This is sketching. We do a lot of erasing. So we've got our nice little fluffy cheek a nice big belly and if you go in here and say oh my gosh if this feels too large then just erase it and try again okay but I think mine has some cute character I don't expect every single one of my paintings to look the exact same okay so from here we're going to go ahead and add a couple of details uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a second foot in here okay so now that our belly is attached we can add sort of a second little foot and he's just kind of poking behind here just a second one, so you've got the first one, the second one's just peeking behind it. Do the same thing for the arm. We're just gonna bring a second little arm coming in here, okay? Now, before you start to think, oh my gosh, we've gotta go into details of the hands and all of that, we're gonna add in our acorn first, okay? So I want you guys to think about, look at my acorn, and think about the fact that this looks like a little French beret, right? Looks like a little hat. Okay, so go ahead and add yourself a nice big arch. It's just going to go right into your hands, and I want you guys to give it a little tiny beret hat top, <laughs> and you're going to just close off so that it looks like you have a little beret. Oh, it sounds like we have a squirrel in the yard with us. <laughs> okay, so now to create the acorn, we're going to drop this down into a nice long point. And a lot of people do their acorns differently. So if you want to do your acorn where it's got, you know, larger or smaller or wider or squatty or whatever you prefer is fine. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and we are going to add one of the most important features, which is your tail. Okay, for the tail, you guys, I want you guys to notice that my tail height is a lot taller than the head, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right over the back of my hind here, and I'm going to come up here, come up here, come up here, and I'm going to do a big, huge, big, huge arch over here and bring it over here and make your tail as large or as small as you like, okay? Now, now that I've come here, this is when you can bring it in for a the big fluffy tail and bring it right back over here, okay? And you can decide, maybe you want it smaller, maybe you want it fluffier or fuller. I tend to try to let my paintbrush do the work for me rather than my pencil. My pencil's kind of a nice guide, but I like to have a large fluffy tail on mine. All right, so we've got kind of the basics on here. We've got our body, we've got our squirrel. Um, how are you guys doing? These are wonderful. Can I see, let me see both of yours. Oh, awesome. Heidi's about to get her little tail on there. It looks awesome. Seven years old. Okay, Hannah, let's see yours. Okay. Okay, the Hannah's 12 years old. Okay, they are literally following along just like you. Okay, so let's go ahead and create some fun little details for our scene the first thing we are going to do is i'm going to add a few more of these acorns of course you may add as many or as little as you like so i'm just going to add maybe one over here again we do that nice arch with a little top create your little french beret bring in the bottoms they always come to a point notice that i did not add any details onto my little beret hat here the top of my acorn i'm gonna let my paintbrush do that i'm gonna add one over here as well you guys can see this all right reach it over okay here's another one okay perfect 
So let's go ahead and add a fun leaf. Now, people have all different ideas of how they like to draw their leaves, so feel free to go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do this one first, which is basically a long line. I'm gonna add another line, another line coming out, another one, and another one. Please feel free to create your own style. You don't need to do this the exact same one. All right, so notice that at each of the ends of my uh, each of the ends of this line here, I have basically like a little three finger prong. So I'm gonna start over here. I'm gonna come up here and go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. and then I'm gonna come over here and do one more little area over here and bring it right back into this line. Same thing over here, one, two, three, and then maybe you'll do a few other horse here. Okay, now you can always make that little end of your leaf longer if you like. All right, so now I have an idea that feels kind of like, okay, I've got my leaf and my acorns and my squirrel. Let's go ahead and add our pine cone. Now, pine cones come in all different shapes and sizes and they come closed and they come open. So please just sort of play with it how you like. I'm gonna start by adding a smile over here. A smile and I'm going to close my smile. Those are wonderful acorns, Heidi. Okay, now I'm going to add a line over here and a line over here. And let me know, Heidi, if you want any help with your tail at all, okay? Okay, and you're going to do one over on this side and one over on this side. And now we're going to start to layer up into what feels like a triangular point. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to create another little line just like this one, another little piece of my pine cone. And now I'm going to start to bring in a few more folds. I want you guys to not worry about it having to be perfect or exact, or it has to look a certain way. Just have fun with it and just watch and experiment how your little pine cone can unfold, okay? So I'm just gonna keep adding a few more layers and notice that I just keep getting smaller and smaller till I get to the top. And then when I get to the top, I add a few just sort of little branchy ones right there. Okay, so, and when you use your, your paintbrush, you can add a few more. And if you're feeling like, oh, I want mine to be more open, just add a few more of these so it looks like they are opened up. Okay, I like it, looks good. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and get into the painting. Oh, those look great, guys. Very nice. Okay, we're getting into the painting. And the first thing we are going to do is we are going to pick our brush out. Now, I tend to like to work on my squirrel first, okay? So I'm gonna work on my squirrel. I'm going to pick, I'm gonna say something like this size brush. So it's not too, too big, not too small. And with watercolors, you want to add water to activate your paint, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do, make sure you're not shaking too much here. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to start with going into our squirrel. So I'm gonna dip my paintbrush into the water and I'm going to gently tap. <clears throat> now I'm going to go into all the beautiful shades, okay? So maybe I pop into this darker brown over here first and I always try my colors out first on my paper towel just to make sure, okay, that's the right color that I would like to go into first. Okay, so I'm gonna pop in here and we're gonna stifle. So that means we're gonna just start to tap in the colors and notice that I'm not feeling the whole thing. I'm not brushing it back and forth. I'm not going into the whole thing thinking I want it all to be one single color, okay? So you might look at this and go, oh my gosh, this looks more like a um, hedgehog, right? <laughs> it looks like a hedgehog a little bit. Okay, so maybe I'll dip into a little bit of that terracotta color. So this would be like the terracotta would be this one right here. Okay, maybe I dip into that. I like to add some of these fall shades in here. And the trick with watercolors is if you feel like you have a little too much water or paint on your piece, you can so easily rip a little paper towel off, okay, rip some off, and you just blot it. You just put it right on top of your paint and just pull it off and it comes off super fast and easy makes it lighter if you're like oh my gosh I have way way too much paint on there okay so I'm gonna keep stifling I added so many different shades of colors I even added white in here I added some of the darker browns and I just pop these in just figure out the shades that you really like don't hesitate to try something different 
Okay, go for like the khaki colors is beautiful. And one of the things that I liked doing was I kept sort of the lighter shades of my squirrel. I kept those lighter in the face area, okay? And notice again, I'm not trying to fill this whole thing in because adding water, you know, activates it as we go. So let's say we try another little darker bit. I'll add, I want him to have special markings, you know, not look like everybody else. So he's going to sort of come in here and then maybe I say, okay, I'm ready to add a little bit of white to him. Maybe I want to lighten it up a little bit. And you can always change your brush as you go. So if you say, okay, I would like a little bit lighter shade, a little bit smaller brush with a lighter shade, just go into a smaller brush. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to him so that he looks nice and creamy, like a little latte color. Ooh, that's a beautiful shade, Heidi. I love that. Hers is, let me see yours. Yours looks super, um, very chestnut color. It's gorgeous. She's gonna add a little water to it. You can always add even a little bit of red, Heidi, to make him kind of like a little redhead. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna pop these in here. And just notice what happens when you start to add the water to it. It starts to blend a little bit. And just keep popping these on. Okay, you can start to add other shades in here. You can hear our cat. She apparently <laughs> thinks that it's, she apparently thinks we're doing a, a drawing for Siamese cats. We are not. Okay, so you can see this little guy is starting to kind of come to life a little bit. Notice that I'm not too worried about having to go exactly in my lines. If I go outside my lines a little bit, that's totally fine. Oh. <laughs> if I, I love, one of my favorite things about watercolors is watching it transform as it goes. Right. So like when it dries, it looks totally different sometimes than when you're actually painting it. But it's just fun to try doing all different shades in here. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I kind of want to do like a little bit darker on the on the little leg area, do it darker. Okay, you just follow your little lines, test out your colors. Let it move, be flexible. Okay, take your little paper towel if you need to. All right, give him some, soften him up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna go back into the ear. Again, I highly recommend doing different shades for your ears, just so that you have a little variety in here. Now, I'm not even going into that nose yet. I'm still just adding little bits of definition in here. Remember, add a little bit of water if you need to soften that up a little bit. My head's weird. It's like lighter than my body. No, you want it to be different shades. That's good. You definitely want different shades because you don't want it to all be the same <clears throat> exact color. All right. I like that. Again, I like to add white to different areas just to kind of highlight a little bit. Okay, maybe I'll add a little bit of definition to his arms. Not much. I don't like to super outline in uh, when I do watercolors just because I like to make it look realistic and soft. Okay, let's bring this in here, going over his little belly again. Okay. Maybe add a little bit of white. And again, if you're like, oh my gosh, too much water, too much paint, just take your towel, tap it off. All right. Okay, now I'm going to go into the tail. I'm gonna go back to my larger brush. I'm gonna have to get moving because I can see that it is starting to get dark out. All right, so again, stifle that on. Pop, pop, pop it on. Use the different shades. Don't be afraid to use some oranges, some whites, some khakis. We're gonna pop that in and I'm not worried. Again, remember, not worried about the pencil lines, okay? So we're not worried about the pencil lines. We can go outside the lines. Always tell yourself it's okay to not stay in the lines. I very much believe in that. 
I like this purple one. I love the color that you're doing. Okay, I might even add a little bit of gold into my colors. Yeah, that's good. That's what I wanted. I wanted a little bit of gold. Add some character to him. Okay, go back into this brown. Pop this in. Right? You can even leave some space in between just so that you can allow the water to move it naturally all by itself see what it comes to okay so again you guys can see I have not said oh my gosh I'm outside the lines what am I gonna do I really allowed myself to go outside of those bring in all those fun shades leave yourself some space yes exactly it looks like he's fluffy by doing that because like his line it looks like his a bone of it right his, exactly like, skin of it and then the fluff comes up okay so I like I like that even this squirrel looks different and unique compared to my sample piece. Okay, and just pop those in. You can decide how, where you want your shades. You can see all the different shades are just everywhere. I love it. I think he's super cute. Okay, now when I go into my uh, little chat, my I keep calling them chestnuts, they're acorns, my little acorns, I try to keep um, the shades different from each other. So I'm gonna keep, let's say the bottom area is gonna be a little bit, um, softer okay so notice i'm leaving some of this white right okay i'm going to add some of this color i'm going to come over here how do you get that color um it's just the khaki over in the corner here i think yours might be yours oh, is right okay. here it just needs to be like rinsed off okay <clears throat> and then you can take another shade and just pop in another shade for your like darkers and i actually added even a smidge of gold in there so keeping it different from the others. Popping this in. You can add a little bit of gold to it. And you can always take your paper towel and say, all right, we're gonna pop, 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 pop. Gives a nice bumpy look. And I still haven't touched this area yet. Okay, I'm gonna go into a little bit of white. How are you girls doing? Good. Awesome. Just finished my sketching. Oh good, now you're gonna work on your paint. And if you think about it, there are so many different like types of squirrel, like breeds. You're right. There's so colors. many different types of uh, breeds of squirrels. You're right, Hannah. They're all different colors too. Yep. So yes. don't feel like, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to do it just like the color she chose. I try to add a lot of this dark brown and a lot of this mm -hmm. color. It's about not the so you go to the blue, the light is blue. So you go to the chestnut color, the green. It's like the it goes to the far right uh-huh the last one's on the right and then you go um seven down and then at the seventh one that's the color that i choose and then i also use a lot of that dark brown in the white oh nice oh man girls we're gonna have to chop chop i can feel that sun is going down it's starting to get dark <laughs> hopefully <laughs> you guys can still see okay i'm popping this on it's kind of fun to paint as it starts to as the sun goes down Sort of nice. It's really nice outside. It's starting to get chillier here in Northern California. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna pop some of that on. I like to give it a little texture by popping some of that on. Okay, now. <laughs> this cat is so funny. She's like really wanting to be in this video with us, apparently. Apparently she would really like to <laughs> paint. All right, my, I guess next time we'll have to do a cat. <laughs> <laughs> so she can be our model. All right, so we've got our little acorns. Our acorns are so cute. They look awesome. Okay, so now since we're doing the browns anyway, let's just pop into, <clears throat> we're gonna pop into our pine cone. Same thing, you guys. You wanna just sort of keep those shades contrasting. So you're gonna have a lighter brown, right? You're gonna have lighter you're gonna pop some of those light colors in. Don't be afraid to leave some space in there for the white, okay? Just pop them in. Don't worry about it having to be perfect, please. Like, the more imperfect, I always say this, the more imperfect it is, the more realistic it looks, okay? So allow yourself some imperfection here so that we can give ourselves some grace and relax a little bit and see what comes of it. Okay, I'm just popping in these beautiful shades. We've done our drawing. We can see where we're going with it. 
add a little bit of white to it to soften it up in areas. Okay, and the other thing, remember, use that paper towel, use a Q-tip, see what happens if you use different, um, you know, items, yeah. Just to see what happens. Maybe it comes where it looks bumpy and gives some texture to it. You know, you can add a little bit more dark definition on here as you go. Okay, add some dark features on here. Don't be afraid of that. Just layer, 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 layer. That's kind of, with watercolors, know that you can just layer your shades. They always turn out really unique after they've dried. Go outside your lines, remember? Go outside the lines. It's okay, your pencil is just your guide. All right, looks pretty cool. I like it. All right, so notice I still have not completed my eye yet and that's because I, my paint is drying right now and I don't wanna add black paint and watch it just spread out everywhere. So I'm allowing that to just sit there for a minute. Now I'm gonna go into my leaf and we're going to make some beautiful sort of orange ombre colors. And I mean, look at these colors here. You honestly could choose so many. The reds, the, you know, terracottas, the beautiful golds, yellows. Have fun with it. You know, try something new and pop that in again. You're just going to pop these shades in and you're going to watch that fun ombre take place. Okay, I'm just popping some reds in. There's nothing too concise about it. Just say, okay, I'm popping reds in. I'm going to pop in some golds. I'm gonna allow those colors to sort of mix together and blend, make them look nice and realistic. Okay, let's add a little tiny bit of yellow. Oh yes, the yellow is what transforms it. The yellow, okay. Let me see. Yeah, that's a great brush. Just remember if your paint is wet, don't go into the eye yet, okay? It's really dry. It's really dry, awesome. Already? Just tiniest amount for that eye. You don't want it to become a big blob. All right. So we've got, you, yes, I know. Me too. You're going to pop these in. You're going to go into your little tail here. And again, allow yourself some wiggle room. Okay. And know that black is a really dark color. It is a so really dark like, color. If you take your black and then you put it in your jar and you want it to stay a certain color and then it <laughs> yeah jar because it turns completely you're right like, like mine just turned gray yep okay i'm just gonna pop this on give it a little texture with my leaf i love some texture in there all right looks pretty awesome okay now i'm gonna go ahead and i'm going to do my little eye okay so heidi i might borrow your brush is this the one that you used mm -hmm. yep okay we're gonna borrow heidi's brush remember use small little brush sizes for those small little features Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna take a little bit of that white. Remember how I said I really wanted my framing of my eye to be white? Don't stress if it starts to mix a little bit with your browns because that makes them look even more real, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not having to say, stay inside the lines. I'm just gonna go right on top. I'm gonna let it blend so he looks furry and precious. You can even add a little bit over here to where his little cheeks would be okay remember that white is going to make something highlight it's gonna pop it it's gonna bring something forward whereas a darker shade for shading is going to deepen it and look darker and further away right okay so I'm gonna be very careful at this point because right now I'm gonna go into my black <clears throat> and before I go into my black <clears throat> I'm going to test my brush first testing the brush yep Make sure it's very small, and I'm just gonna pop in a little bit of this black. I'm not gonna do too crazy. And if you're ever worried that your brush is not small enough, just use the back of your brush. Okay, I'm just gonna turn mine a little bit. Okay, pop this in here, here. All right, I think that the eye looks good. Now you'll notice one little difference here is that he's got the teeny tiniest little white reflection, okay? And so I'm gonna add that, and I'm going to add that by using the back of my brush. Front, and there's the back, okay? So I'm just going to take a little bit of white, and if you even have like a little bit of acrylic paint, a little acrylic white paint at home, you could even do that too. Or if you're nervous, you could just wait and let that black dry completely. But you're just gonna pop a little, oh, mine's not even wet enough. You're gonna do a little teeny tiny reflection dot right 
in the corner of your eye and just be very gentle to add it so it doesn't go everywhere. Okay, so now we've got our little squirrel. The other thing that I did add is I added a very, very gentle small amount of black to his little nose area. Okay, so I'm adding just a little bit to his nose area. I don't want it to be super crazy, so I'm just super light on that, and I even add a little bit of water to my brush just to soften it. I just don't want it to be like a big, you know, look like a big Sharpie line. Just very gentle. Okay, so now we have our little squirrel, and I think he's done. You can always go back in and touch up little areas if you're like, oh, I kind of want his little backside to be a little bit shaded or darker. Just fill it in a little bit. If I, if you want to have more details for some hands, just bring that in. Okay, you can add whatever you like on here. You can go over here. You can add some shading in this area if you like. You can add some white to it. Bring your little guy to life. Have fun with it. Remember your piece is yours. It doesn't need to look just like mine. And remember if you're ever like, oh gosh, I need to take a little away a little bit of water, a little bit of paint, you just rip some paper towel off, place it right on top, lift it up. Okay? All right. So let's see our girls. Let's see our seven-year-old. Seven-year-old Heidi's piece. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. I love her leaf. Here's my piece. Here's Heidi's. Okay, and Hannah, let's see yours as well. Hannah is not finished yet, but she's gonna still keep working, but look at those gorgeous shades that she's used. All right, guys, the sun is going down. We're gonna pack our stuff up, go inside, and we hope you enjoyed this art lesson. We love that you guys are all art enthusiasts and you wanna be here. We will continue to have more tutorials and videos Thanks so much for coming and we'll see you guys soon. Bye.